Okay, so what we're going to be doing here today is we're going to be um, doing a BGA rework of the VRAM and the GPU on a Radeon HD 5770. Um, why would you want to do this, you ask? Well, let's say you turn on your computer and you notice that, wow, I have all these vertical stripes on the screen and I can't see anything. Or you can only boot into your computer with safe mode or you notice the BIOS loading screen, instead of seeing the hard drive name, you see a bunch of question marks, weird characters all displaying. Uh, any one of those symptoms would be a good sign that it's time to rework the BGA of your graphics card. And the BGA just stands for Ball Grid Array. It's how RAM chips and GPUs are attached to uh, graphics cards. Okay. All right. So. First thing you're going to want to do is take the card. By the way, um, you should probably do this when it's out of warranty uh, because doing this can void your warranty. Uh, actually, it will void your warranty with the manufacturer. Um, so what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the processor tensioner. Um, this just holds tension between the back of the board and the heat sink. Uh, um, different cards will have a different position, but most configurations will be like four screws and a tensioner, which is just a piece of aluminum. Okay, then when that's off, you're also going to want to remove all the screws that you see because they are going to be holding on the outside case of the graphics card which is going to help with the airflow and it also will hold the fan on most modern graphics cards. up the casing and remove the fan connector from the header and then just move this somewhere out of the way. Okay so now we're getting down to the meat of it that is the GPU it's in a BGA which is like I said the ball grid array um, I'm not sure how well you can get a good look at that but uh, you, little silver lines that go up and down between the chip would be the sort of balls um, in computers, modern computers, you'll see a little hook or you'll see a little screw on a laptop that's called ZIF, Zero Force Insertion. Um, okay, so now I need to get this RAM sync off, which I believe should just lift up. Unless I have one, oh, these two little screws on the side. Uh, different cards will have their heat sinks set up differently. Some have no RAM syncs at all for the VRAM. So... Even with all this design, of course, they still fail. There is the problem. 90% of the time, it's going to be the RAM sinks. And there we go. Some thermal pads. Probably not the best. So on this card, we have four modules on this side, four modules on this side, making up one gig and then the GPU. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the BGA rework station. I'm going to decide what temperature I want the warmer plate, which I'm just going to put it on 200. Um, there's all different people say different things. I'm pretty comfortable with 200, and besides that's as high as this one goes. If I had an IR pre-warming plate, I would probably put it at about 212. 
but it's close enough. Um, when you start lower isn't always better, but usually 225 for these types of cards works really well. Um, if it's been worked once and you have you don't really want to reball it at this time, you could raise it. I am comfortable because I have my timing down to do it around 245, but we'll go 250. This is the PCB brackets. We are just going to go ahead and figure out which way will sit best on this. Um, you don't always have to put it in the track. If you can, that's good. But a lot of times, it's not going to go correctly. But I am going to check and see how we can get this in. Okay. So today, yes, this particular card does fit in. Now when I flip it to do the four chips on the bottom, it's not going to go in there like that. But for right now it will. One of the most important things you can use when doing this is going to be your flux. Um, I am using Kester. It's a no-clean flux. It's 951. Um, you can get it anywhere. Get big bottles, little bottles, eBay, wherever. Um, this will clean the flux. It will also prepare it for when you heat it to be reconstituted. Um, get rid of any micro cracks. Um, as an applicator, you don't have to be all too worried about everywhere that it's going. As long as you're putting it on both sides. And then you get it here. And when you see, you can squeeze very slowly. You'll see it come out the other side. If it comes out the other side, you're done. So now all of those are done. And now we're going to move it on to the warming plate. And I particularly like the T862++ because it has a larger IR warmer plate as opposed to the T6, the T862. Uh, the T862 works just as well, but it's a smaller plate, so you have to be more precise. I like this because it's going to warm up enough of the section of the board without warming everything because I don't want to heat everything if I don't have to could just lead to problems. So it's going to take a few minutes. We're now going to turn the bottom plate on. Um, once that gets to 200, then I will go ahead and start the rework on the BGAs. See you in a few. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light on, uh, which is the IR lamp. And then I'm going to adjust my height to where I feel comfortable. Um, I am comfortable there. Um, I'm going to try to hit the VRAM twice on the first pass, um, and then I'm going to move to the next one after that. You'll notice that the solder around that connects the little capacitors starts to turn liquefied. That's what you want. When you see that, it's a good indication that you're at the right temperature and you're doing what you need to do for it to be reconnecting to the, to the board. I try to go in a pattern back and forth between the chips, farthest inside, farthest inside. It's just how I like to do it. Um, it's whatever you like to do. You really shouldn't need to hit these chips more than twice. Um, you definitely don't want to do it too much or you can damage the, the VRAM module. So we want to avoid that. So just do it two and after you do the two you see how it works. Okay, after I do this one, I'm going to move on to the GPU, and I'm going to work that. So we're going to start, I like to start, hit it in the middle, twice. Then I'm going to go to the corners. I'm going to do diagonal. That smoke is what you want to see. It means you're burning off the flux.
do the corners one more time. And then I'm going to go in an S motion, opposite ways, repeat that for a few passes. And then I'll come down here in this corner and I'll bring it in an S pattern. And then I'll try to come and get two S's before the light goes out. That's usually the best for me. Um, you'll get your timing down. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a reverse. circle a couple times. I'm just really trying to make sure that I get even heating. I try not to sit it still too long. I don't want to bubble the chip. Then when I feel like, okay, that's good, I'm going to lift it back up a little. Just make sure that I got it right above there. I'm going to let it go two or three times. I'm not trying to go until all the flux is gone. I'm just trying to go until I feel confident that I've reseated these chips. All right, now, I have done hundreds of these type of repairs, at least 1,600, just on HP laptops alone. Um, you just have to do, do it till you feel confident. Um, my success rate is like 98% on laptops, so I feel like I'm at a point now where I can actually show someone how to do it, and I hope you guys find this informational and you find it useful. I am going to now let it cool down. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to repeat the steps on the other four module chips on the opposite side of the board. This works for all kinds of electronics, not just graphics cards, anything that is basically soldered and is a chip these days. So I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll do the other side.